OK, so let's have a look at command line jobs. At its simplest, a job is a single command like ls. A job could also be something more complex like a pipeline. This would also be classified as a job, or even a shell script. The other main concept to understand when using jobs is foreground and background. Simply put, foreground is in front and background is behind. Not in the sense of a queue or line where one person is in front or behind another in the same line, but in the sense of dimensional depth. Just imagine the foreground being the surface of a cube closest to you and the background being the surface on the opposite side. We can create several jobs on one command line using the ampersand symbol. By appending an ampersand to the end of a job, you are instructing bash to run whatever preceded the ampersand as a background job. So let's have a look at what that would look like. This is a small Python script that counts up from 0 to 99 in 1 second intervals. This script is now running in the foreground. So what this means is, while this program is running, we are unable to do anything else within our terminal. The only three options that we have are let it run its course, suspend it using control Z, or kill it using control C. So let's stop this script from running using control C and start it in the background. We now have our prompt back, but our screen is currently being polluted by the output from our script. We can try pressing Ctrl Z, but this will not work as our job is currently running in the background. So let's bring the script back to the foreground using FG and pause it using Ctrl Z. Let's run our script as a new job in the background, but this time let's redirect output to dev null so it no longer floods our terminal with output. So we now have a clean prompt with no output from our background job. We can list the jobs in our current shell by entering the jobs command. Starting from the left, the number within the brackets is the job number. The plus sign after the brackets indicates that this job is the current job. Next is the state of the job. This could be running, stopped, terminated, done, or in the case where a job errors, exit with the error number. To the right of the line is the actual job. We don't have to start all of our jobs at the same time. We can add jobs whenever we want, so let's add another job. The minus sign after the job number indicates the next job. To list jobs with their corresponding PIDs, we can use the L flag. We can get a listing of just the current job or the next job by appending a plus or minus sign to the jobs command. And as our sleep 100 job has completed, we currently only have one job and that is the one that we stopped earlier. We can also just get the PIDs using the P flag. Let's create a few more jobs so we have a longer jobs listing. We can stop or terminate jobs using kill with either their job number, a substring or PID. When using a job number, prefix the job number with a percent sign. If you're using a substring, prefix the substring with a percent question mark. Let's stop job number two with its job number. This will have the same effect as using control Z, but as you know, the shortcuts will only work if the job is in the foreground. We can resume a job by using BG followed by the job number. Jobs are executed concurrently. What this means is that control is passed back and forth between jobs. This will cause output to be interspersed. So let's have a look at an example of this. So script A just echoes a string of A's a number of times, and B does the same, but with a string of B's, and the same with C. If we run them sequentially, First we get a block of A's, followed by B's and C's last. If we run these as background jobs, you can see that our output is no longer sequential, but interspersed. If you close the terminal or an SSH session that currently has jobs running, all of your jobs will be terminated. If you're using a terminal multiplexer like Screen or Tmux, this isn't an issue, as you can just reattach to your Screen or Tmux session and everything will be as it was. Alternatively, you could start your jobs with no hangup. To run a job with no hangup, all you need to do is prefix whatever you want to run with no hangup. 
no hangup will automatically redirect standard out and standard error to a file called nohup.out in your working directory or to your home directory if it doesn't have write access in your present working directory. Let's shorten the count script and run it with no hangup to see what that looks like. As you can see, our terminal is not being polluted with output from our count.py script. And if we close this terminal window, our job will still run in the background until it completes. If we look for the process, you can see that it is still running even though we closed the terminal window. And here is the saved output from our script. Using no hangup does have one thing that we may need to deal with depending on the job we are running. What would happen if our job required some input? Let's have a look at this script. All it does is prints running to the screen, then on a new line asks you to enter some input. It then waits for you to type something in and proceeds to print whatever you enter one character per line. Now let's run it as a background job. As we haven't redirected the output, we are seeing the prompt for us to enter some input. If we just hit enter again, we're back at our normal prompt. And if we type jobs, you can see that our job is in a stopped state. This is what happens when a job is requesting input from standard in. So to enter some text, all we need to do is foreground the job and enter our text. And as you can see, our script prints our text back to the screen and the job completes. Now let's run this job with no hangup. So something different has just happened. It looks like our job has just exited without asking us to enter any input. This is actually done by no hangup. If your job at any point tries to read from standard in, no hangup will just terminate it. If you look at the output that no hangup prints to the screen, you can see that it is ignoring input. There are a couple of ways that we can get around this, but it all depends on whether we know what we want to enter before we run no hangup. If you look at the output from no hangup on the screen, it now only states that it's appending output instead of ignoring input and appending output. The output will show up in the nohup.out file. And as you can see, there's an error there. So if we cat out our stop on read.py script, you'll see why. So as you can see, this script actually requires input twice. So when we echoed hello into our script, we were only providing input once. If we need to continually provide the same input like Y or N or something else, we could use yes and pipe its output into no hangup. And as you can see, yes fulfilled the input requirements of our script. So I'd recommend that you check out the video that I did on no hangup, which contains a neat little trick that you can use to enter whatever input you want into background jobs using named pipes in a non-blocking way. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.